Hi everyone, welcome to Red Carpet With, as always, Shah Shamshiri here and today we're talking to another big star. Uh, okay, I, I love mentioning this on the show because before this, um, I have had a guest from uh, the Philippines, Malaysia of course, Indonesia not yet, Singaporeans, I've got a few already, I think I've got two Singaporeans or three Singaporeans so far. This is my latest Singaporean star, we're talking to the latest reigning Singapore idol as he puts it, Cesari Sazali. Hi. How are you, Cesari? Good, thank you very much. Uh, just in case you guys uh, would like to know something before, we just did this shoot. Uh, actually, I already said something, but I got nervous because I'm going to be here, right? So we had to do this all over again, okay? So anyway, like I said, the reigning Singapore Idol because in Singapore, they had three seasons of Singapore Idol. In Malaysia, as you know, we only had two and then it stopped. In Singapore, they had three and he was the last winner of Singapore Idol, yes, okay? After Taufik right. Batisa, Hadi Mirza, you have Cesari. Yes. Okay, uh, getting straight to get to know Cesari Sazali. Uh, Malaysians may not be, you know, uh, very much aware about Cesari Sazali. Who is he? Suddenly he's coming here, as all these Singaporeans are always coming here. Okay, you know, we don't have a problem with that. <laughs> but we would just like to know why this sudden, you know, decision to come here. Because some, uh, your previous Singapore Idol winners have tried to, or actually they actually did, but they didn't leave much of an impact, okay? Mm -hmm. So you decided to follow this, this despite whatever has happened before. So can you tell us why? Well, um, the competition was back in 2009. Okay. So um, after which I had to serve national service for two years. So uh, while I was serving national service, I was uh, in the army of course, and I released my first album. Okay. But we were struggling with time constraints and, and a lot of things like that. Okay. So. Um, I, I've always wanted to write more Malay music. I've sang, I've sang in English most of my life, but um, uh, I've recently discovered, I would like to say, um, the power so-called uh, of, of Malay lyricism mm -hmm. uh, from being, from watching live shows here in KL and also in Jakarta. And I finally gained enough confidence to be able to um, put my Malay lyricism and my Malay songwriting forth. So in my, in my mind, of course, I would think that um, if I were to start writing a Malay song, okay. say for example, um, kemana arah lagu itu? So like where, where, where will the song go? Okay. And in my, in my opinion, if I want to be the best Malay songwriter or the mess, best uh, Malay musician, there is nothing else to do but to get involved or to work with the best. In the Malay yeah, music exactly. industry. And we, which is why I decided to head up north and um, I recently got involved with Sony Music in okay. Malaysia. Yes. And uh, yeah, I've, I've been working with a lot of really, really good... Currently, artists. you're signed to Sony Music Malaysia, yes. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Sony Music Malaysia also has a reputation of signing Singaporean artists. <laughs> okay, I have to mention that. I wonder why. Okay, they have a reputation of signing Singaporean artists. Not that that's a problem. Again, I'm saying we all appreciate talent, okay? No, no, not that that's a problem. I'm just saying. So you are their latest Singaporean product, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So they are going to produce an album for you, I suppose. Right now, there's a single, of course. Yes. Uh, but will there be an album eventually? There are plans eventually. Okay. But um, we are working on a more single basis now. Okay. Um, we are actually looking for for songwriters to work with right now. Uh, okay. I, we have a couple in mind. We spoke to some songwriters from Indonesia. Okay. And some local songwriters here as well. Some of my friends that I knew and grew up with here. Um, so we're trying to work towards the next single after this one called Sayang and uh, we're trying to work on the next one uh, which will probably be released within the time frame of the next few months. Okay, and talking about Sayang now, Sayang currently is played on all the Malay radio stations here in Malaysia, alright. Uh, <laughs> now, that is uh, composed and written by Cesari Cesali yes, completely. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, that's my first attempt actually in okay. trying to... Because I, I grew up um, producing music Okay. I, I enrolled myself in music school, I studied music in college, I studied music production. He went to college with my previous guest, Tengku Adil. Tengku Adil, yes. yes. Okay. Adil was my senior in uh, college okay. and uh, I, I still remember, remember when he was uh, packing his stuff to come over to KL. Uh -huh. like, uh, he was messaging everyone and he was like, hey, I'm going to start um, my career here and I hope that uh, you all do, uh, do uh, good things for me and I hope to see you guys here one day. And finally, we are all here and um, 
Malaysia no, seems like a big thing for you guys, I suppose. It is, it is. Because ah, it's, it's, Taharu. the reason is because seriously, the best are here. Okay. This is why we want to get involved with, with the best. Okay, alright. I mean, nice why do know. something when you don't want to get the best out of it, right? Yes, very well said. And of course, like I said, being Malaysian is a big honor, of course. We're very happy to know that. Thank you okay. for having me. Uh, okay, so you mentioned I was talking about Sayang and how the single is currently being played on the radio. What's his response been like so far? The response for the song? Uh, so far, Alhamdulillah. Okay. Uh, bagus juga. Um, it's been on the charts uh, on a few stations. Of the radio stations, I okay. Two radio stations. Already. Um, the response has been um, quite overwhelming, I would say. Uh, okay. I didn't expect uh, much from a song that I knew was kind of a niche. Okay. Um, it's not really a song that was written for the mainstream radio. Okay. Uh, it was just kind of a, it was kind of a breakout song for me because um, with the whole pop music thing that I was doing back when I was in Singapore and the things that I want to do that are in my mind, I think this song kind of sets sets the tone for what's to come in the future. I see. All right, that's great to know. And like you said, planning. Okay, but you also mentioned it's now planning an album with a few uh, composers, songwriters here. Now, uh, you, from what I know, uh, your image, so you're a singer-songwriter, play the guitar, you know, those kind of guys lah, right? <laughs> okay. Usually these kind of guys, they choose to work, I guess, uh, just with uh, a certain group of people, if not just themselves, you know? They want to write, they want to compose everything. So. When you actually say that you want to work, how open are you? Are you going to like, let's just say there's a selection of seven songs. Are you going to have all seven written by someone else or like only okay, like give two to other people? The rest are all mine, that kind of thing, you know? I'm a kind of person that's very open to creative collaborations. Okay. So, I, that's, that's, that's some, sometimes a thing that I find um, most ironic because I grew up listening to jazz music. Okay. My friends listen to punk rock. Okay. So, I started, started playing music because I wanted to be a punk rock drummer. So okay. I, I played in a punk rock band for three years and then um, I started listening to jazz again then when I went to school everybody was listening to R&B and hip hop and the, the people that I hung out with all listened to hip hop so I had I was thrown around several different places and when I wanted to sing a song I had a guitar so in my mind I had to sing this type of song I had to be like singer songwriter but as the years went by I'm like why can't I sing R&B and play guitar, why can't I do all these types of different things without having to be stereotyped as hey, he's the guy who plays guitar, he's the acoustic guy or whatever. So I think I'm all about breaking barriers okay. and uh, I've worked with a lot of uh, musicians who are jazz musicians and I've worked with a couple of um, uh, rappers are the, are, the, are the best people to work with in my opinion. Okay. I think rappers are, are insane when it comes to uh, telling a story and, and and uh, phrasing and lyricism. Um, I'm very open to working with even people who, who don't play instruments, even people who just sit in their bedroom and produce um, all types of sounds. I'm open to traditional music even. I I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, have a, I have a thing for things that are not um, common or I would say mainstream. Okay, Maybe. all right. We, we get that. I think it's kind, kind of very well explained already. <laughs> but then we're going to take a short break, right? Couple with Cesare Cesali. We'll be right back uh, with more questions to ask. So stay tuned, don't go away. With the weather hotting up this April on Lux TV, even hotter shopping spots are the focus of our destination program. This month on Lux TV, we head to Russia to check out these beautiful window displays before jetting off to Italy to shop till we drop. We also stop off in Biarritz, followed by a trip to Corsica. Destination, Lux TV brings you a range of new ideas for exotic tourist resorts every day of the week. The program features the most luxurious spas and hotels, not forgetting the very latest in fashion and cars. 
explore new countries and traditions on a long, exciting adventure, or even just a short city break. Destination is broadcast every day on Lux TV. Lux TV, your luxury channel. The Ultimate Sports Survival Guide, Monday to Thursday, 9 p.m. Welcome to the Ultimate Survival Guide. You want to know what's important? Surviving in this ugly world. Don't bash balls with your friends. <laughs> do put your balls in the sand. Don't. Do. Don't. Don't. Do. 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 do, do don't. And remember, if it looks stupid, it is stupid. Oh. Seriously, know your limits. To escape sports hidden pitfalls, listen to Will and follow his tips. The Ultimate Sports Survival Guide, your brand new show just for fun. Monday to Thursday, 9 p.m. on Trace Sports Stars. Hi, welcome back to Red Carpet with and today we're talking to Cesari Cesali, the reigning Singaporean idol. I love how he puts that. Which I is love true. how that sounds. Yes, the rain, <laughs> no, reigning Miss World, reigning Miss Universe, the reigning Singaporean idol because after that there's no more Singaporean idol. Let's hope they don't make any more. Yeah, we never know. We <laughs> never know. Forever right? be the reigning Singapore yes. idol, I guess. Anyway, before the break, we were talking about his latest single, you know, how he came to Malaysia now. Here's one thing, uh, I've interviewed him earlier, I wrote an article about him actually. Uh, you guys may not know that his first song, when he told us, it was actually Isabella, right? Yeah. How old were you at that time actually? Oh man, I, I could barely even talk. Uh -huh. um, if I remember correctly, my parents were saying that it might have been my first few words. <laughs> um, the neighbours used to call me Isabella. Because so they, they don't remember my name. Eh, ni yang budak Isabella ni. Eh? Oh, so okay. they always call me Isabella because I was singing it when I was really really young, even before I could make up full sentences. So you kept seeing the yeah. uh, the, the song on TV or something, I suppose. Or you yeah, it I was. On the radio. It was on radio all the time. So I guess um, after Fiona, eh, after I'm Fiona pula. After Isabella, I was called Fiona because I kept singing for you to see Fiona. Oh, and that okay. was like people people started calling me song names. Okay, by that time, okay, were you already living in Singapore? Because from what I know, you've got Malaysian heritage, actually. Yes. Your, your parents um, are... My grandparents are Malaysian. Okay. Uh, Dua-dua orang Johor. Okay. And then my, my, grand, my grandfather uh, on my mother's side is from Indonesia. So, my, my, my mother's family is from Indonesia. My, my father's family is from Malaysia. Okay. And my parents met in Singapore. Oh. So, I would say that I'm like in between. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Just, this is the product. Yeah. This is the product. Just, in met in between. Okay, so all right, so Isabella, like is it your first few words with Isabella? Yeah. A lot of Singaporeans also like Amy Search. That I know for yeah, right? of course. You of guys course. love Amy Legend. Search, right? Okay. And then from there, this has progressed, and now Sayang is here and everything. Okay, from the whole Malaysia Singapore, the latest thing is this World Cup thing. Ah, ah there's yes. the latest thing. I was informed that Cesari Cesali, Ali Sata, uh, Judika, and Ricky Martin collaborated in a song. Yeah. Could you please tell us about this? Oh, we were just in. Uh, we were recently just in Jakarta for the press conference. Um, I got approached to uh, to do the song as a collaboration for the World Cup album, and the song is called Vida. Uh, okay. It's basically a project called uh, the Super Song Project, okay. um, in, in which out of 2,000 songs from all over the world, uh, all the songwriters sent in the songs, and this song was chosen, um, and it was chosen to be sung by Ricky Martin. Okay. So there's an English version that Ricky sang, and they thought that it would be very apt that they would do um, an Asian version. Okay. So, and what better what better to do an Asian version than to sing it in Bahasa. So, Bahasa Indonesia, Bahasa Malaysia, Bahasa Melayu. Okay. And uh, they got a singer from each of the countries. So, when I got the phone call, the first thing I heard was, Ricky Martin wants, wants to do a song with you. And I'm like, no. Okay. No way. It's like, no way that that's ever going to happen. But... Uh, as, as time progressed, well, we found out that it was actually, yeah, it was actually going to happen. Um, he was supposed to be in Jakarta to record with us, uh, okay. me, Ali Sata, and um, Judika. Judika. Okay. But he couldn't make it because he was in, uh, he was doing a gig in, in, in Sydney. Okay. But when we did the press conference, um, there was a big screen and, and we were Skyping with him in the press. So okay. it was it was a really cool experience. So you guys recorded separately now. Is it true Alif recorded it in Malaysia, you recorded it in Singapore, yes. and Judika recorded it in... Yeah, so it was recorded in three countries. It was put together in uh, Jakarta okay. and then 
Bam. Uh, I have already heard the single on the radio actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so it's uh, he sings the English verse, Ricky Martin mm-hmm. sings in English, and the rest of you guys sing in Basa, right? Yeah, okay. Basa. So this will dis- be distributed in all the countries involved, I suppose. As in yeah. The album is going to be distributed worldwide and uh, the song as well. Yeah, so I, it makes me proud that I get to sing my language uh-huh. in a song that the whole world will get to hear. That's that that's what I think is is the most exciting part about this project. Of course, I mean, yeah. first of all, it's Ricky Martin. Yeah. Secondly, you know, I mean, that, that's such a big deal. Uh, I mean, who would have ever thought, you know, that like you said, after coming to Malaysia to sing in Malay and everything, next thing you sing in Malay on top of that together with Ricky Martin, and now the I whole know, right? world will be hearing I know. this. I'm very, I'm very fortunate. Okay, yes, and we're very fortunate to have him here, of course. We've already had Ali Sata on the show, so next we should get Judika to come on. I'll give, right. him, I'll give him a call. <laughs> so anyway, alright, so what's next for Cesari? You mean, okay, if I were to ask you, you've already done a collab with Ricky Martin and everything. Oh, what's next for you? I mean, what's going to happen after that? Um, right now, I'm working on a couple of live shows that I'm doing in Singapore and okay. uh, Malaysia as well. Uh, the next big thing that I'm going to do is this uh, international music conference in Singapore that's called Music Matters Live. Okay. Um, that's happening in uh, late May. Okay. And then after which, I am gonna, we are going to continue writing the next single and trying to come up, figure out what we can do uh, in terms of artistic direction uh, with how the music video is going to go and all that kind of stuff. I'm really, really excited for this song because um, I'm bringing in a lot of songwriters from all over the place to start working on this song. So it sounds like, and it seems like it's already, it's already Really, really exciting. Okay, all right, and um, I guess we'll be seeing a lot of you in Malaysia. I guess. I guess so, because <laughs> now he's signed to Sony Music Malaysia, just like uh, the other Singaporean artists who are signed to Sony Music Malaysia as well. Okay, Sony Music people are here, so I have to say lah. Right? <laughs> okay, but anyway, um, one uh, last question: What would your advice be to people who have tried but never got what they wanted? And there are a lot of singers and writers, aspiring singers and writers, who want to get to a certain level but they never get there. Your advice to them? I guess sometimes it's 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 a it's a mixture of luck and hard work. Okay. It's not something that that just happens for you. For, I mean, some people get really really lucky. Some people work really hard and don't get lucky. So it's a combination of both. Okay. But I think it's all uh, it's all fate. You know, okay. sometimes you spend years and years trying to do something that you're not meant to do. But sometimes you spend years and years um, doing something you don't want to do. So for me, I think. If you really believe that you can do it, eventually it will happen. Like eventually, it doesn't. Some, it takes. It takes some. Some guy a month. It takes some guy ten years. Yeah. But if if you're determined and you meet the right people and you have the right attitude, you you stay positive and and you are you're nice to people. The main thing is really to be nice to people you meet. I think eventually it will happen someday. That's the best advice. Be nice to people. Get it? All right. Uh, I'm afraid that's about all the time we have today. Red Carpet with Cesare Cesali comes to an end. Thank you so much for Thank coming. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. Big honor to have him on the show. As always, we shall see more um, amazing superstars like himself on the show. Uh, but for now, this is Shah and Cesare saying goodbye. Thanks, guys, for watching. <laughs>